Some dresses, two tops, and a couple kids' clothes pretty much sums up my sewing for the month of February. So if that's something that you might be interested in, please keep on watching. Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. So for today's video, I'm going to have a chit chat with you guys about all the things I made for the month of February. Just before I get into the crooks of the matter, let me share with you guys what I'm wearing. So for today's outfit, it's nothing too special, you guys, because I am at home. It is actually Saturday when I'm recording this video. And so, you know, it's like a relaxed, lingerie sort of situation. So I'm wearing the Lennox Top by Love Notions, which I did make as part of their um, ambassador program. So this top came into testing, I think, sometime early 2023. And I sewed up the top version with the square neckline. And I did go ahead and pair this with an Ankara maxi skirt for the So Recreate the Look Challenge. So I'll pop in a picture somewhere in the video so that you guys can see this top in all its splendor. But I'm rocking it again today because it's comfortable and it's cute and it's pink. And I need no reason in particular, you guys, to wear me some pink. Now, pink is my energy color. You guys already know that I am also a Your Color Guru ambassador. And I realize that there's a lot of hype now in the sewing community about colors, which there wasn't so much of, or at least I hadn't noticed it um, for the last like three years that I have been doing this ambassadorship. But I do see the community buzzing, buzzing, buzzing now about colors, getting your color analysis, whether it's a worthwhile investment and so on and so forth. And I would absolutely say it is a worthwhile investment. If you're a sewist, it makes shopping for fabrics so much easier. You know, shopping online can be very overwhelming, especially for things like fabrics, which have so many different varieties, prints and colors. And it's really, really handy to be able to just draw for your color card and help eliminate some of the choices right off the bat. So for me, whenever I'm shopping for fabrics, I pull my color card out and I compare the um, fabrics on my screen to my color card. As a matter of fact, some websites like Style Maker Fabrics, for example, gives you the option to shop by color. And so I pretty much ignore those colors that are not on my color card and zoom straight into those reds and those pinks and so on that are on my color card. So if you are interested in getting your colors done, I am going to leave my ambassador code right here in the video and in the description box down below. It is on social and it will save you guys a couple extra bucks on your color analysis if you choose to have one done. No pressure, you guys, but absolutely worthwhile investment in my opinion. All right, now that you guys know what I'm wearing and all the plugs have been out of the way, let's get into today's video. All right, so as usual, I have my handy dandy iPad because you guys already know that my memory sucks sometimes and I like to be able to refer to my notes so that I do not forget to tell you something important. So the first thing that I think I'm going to show you is this baby right here. Now this is McCall's 8413 and it is a kaftan pattern. Now I realized that this pattern hadn't gotten a lot of love from the sewing community. How do I know this? Well, I was searching the hashtag over on Instagram and it came up pretty much blank. But I did see Brittany J. Jones refer to this pattern in, I think, her five dresses to sew or five easy dresses to sew, something of the sort. She had a video here on YouTube featuring five dresses that you should sew and she did suggest this pattern. It seems as if a lot of people did not take the bait, but I ran ahead and purchased this pattern to sew up this dress. Now, truth be told, when the pattern first came out, I completely sort of overlooked it. It wasn't something in my style and I just didn't find it particularly appealing. But I got this fabric as part of my um, Minerva ambassadorship. Now, I am a Minerva ambassador as well. And that means that from time to time, I do get free Minerva fabrics to sew up anything that I want to make. And so I had gotten this fabric in, I think, my January call out. And the moment I laid eyes on this fabric, for some reason, this pattern came to mind, you guys. Now, I unboxed this fabric right here on YouTube a couple of days before Valentine's Day. I think it was a Friday before Valentine's Day. And I thought that this material would have been perfect for a Valentine's Day dress. 
of course i got it on five on friday and your girl has so many other things going on i just didn't think i would be able to get this dress sewn up in time for like a valentine's day date or anything of the sort but it did it did strike me as being like the perfect material for valentine's and i wanted to make something chic and sexy with that in my mind and this is what i came up with now i really really like how this dress turned out i think i made the size large blended out to an extra large because if i'm not mistaken this pattern does come in alphanumeric sizing and i did make view a which is the shorter version now i'm sure you guys can't see it very well on the hanger but i'll try to put in some twirls or pictures or whatever i have so that you can see this baby on my body now the one drawback i think with my particular body shape now i am a rectangular body shape which means that the difference between my bust waist and hips is less than 10 inches and i feel like if i had more ass you guys that this dress would have been perfect so if you're like a pear shape or if you're an hourglass shape or something like that i don't know i just feel like this dress would look so amazing on somebody with that body shape um that's not to say that it didn't look good on me i think it looked okay on me but i just feel like it could have been better you know you guys ever feel like that like mm, it's all right but it might be better on somebody else no i'm going to wear this dress I am going to make no mistake about it. I am going to wear this dress because it is beautiful and this fabric is perfection. But I just thought when I tried it on, I don't know if it's because of the gathering situation here, which by the way is great at concealing any like tummy issues like, like what I have. And um, I don't know. I like it. I like it. And I think that this fabric was great for it. Now, it was a pretty easy sew, and I actually did a sew along for this dress, again, right here on my channel, and I'll put the link to that sew along here in the description box. And it was a pretty easy sew, you guys, but there is a lot of hemming involved. So if you don't like hemming, then you might want to avoid this pattern. It calls for hemming at the neckline, and it calls for hemming at the um, hemline, which is curved. So you know you have to go ahead and pull those basting stitches inwards to help you keep the curve down at the hem. But all in all, a pretty great make and a great start to February, in my opinion. All right, on to the next one. So after I finished my McCall's 8413, I did have a little bit of that Minerva fabric left over, and I decided to use it up and make myself this camisole right here, which comes out of Mimi G's book. I think it's called Make It Simple by Mimi G. And I actually hacked the pattern just to use this additional frill right here at the hemline. I had a little bit of fabric left over and it was just the perfect length for um, ruffles at the front and back. And I just decided on the spur of the moment to add them in to my camisole. Now I have made this camisole twice before, but I did make it like with a regular hem. But this time, because I had the extra fabric, I decided to add it to this camisole. Now you might notice that this camisole is not quite finished, but I am showing it to you in this next video because I made most of it during the month of February, but I'll tell you a secret. I am terrible, terrible, terrible when it comes to finishing my garments. Like I will start off, hot off the gate and then slow down as the process comes nearing to an end i don't know why that happens to me but sometimes my makes sit unfinished for months on end and it's something simple like adding a button turning the hem removing my gathering stitches that sort of thing now in this case i really just need to go ahead and attach the back of my straps you guys now the instructions have you put the straps in the front of the camisole but to leave the space in the back of the camisole, which allows you to try your um, camisole on and adjust the length of your straps. That is all this make is waiting on you guys, just for me to go ahead and put my straps in. And I don't know why it has taken me this long. Now, I did go ahead and put some elastic through my straps. Now, this is a tip I picked up a couple years ago when working with like spaghetti straps. I found that my straps kept slipping off my shoulders. Now, I do have sloping shoulders thanks to having a terrible posture, but this trick has helped save my spaghetti straps and sort of stop them from slipping off my shoulders, which is super, super annoying. So I did run elastic through my casing and I need to just try it on and secure these straps to my camisole. And I think I need to do that 
after I record this video so that I can finally wear this camisole. Now I also need to go in and tidy up like my loose threads. You might see like loose threads sticking out here and there like from my under stitching and that sort of thing. And I also need to go ahead and remove my gathering stitches from the tiered part of my camisole which is really pretty simple work. Now to finish my hem because my gathering tier was so narrow I decided to finish off my hem with a rolled hem using my serger and I used this like pink and red serger thread that I had and I thought it blended in nicely with this um, fabric. So this again is the camisole by Mimi G in her Make It Simple book. And the next thing I want to share with you is actually a remake. Now it's very unusual for me to make a garment more than once let alone more than once sort of like back to back now in my january mix i did share with you the hillary top by tasuti fabrics and you guys your girl made a second version of that top but this time using um ankara fabric so i'll go ahead and pop the link into my first version right here somewhere so that you guys can go and check out um the first version of this make which i did film a behind the sew video on which basically gives you information on the sizing um the techniques and so on and i also filmed a sew along featuring this version it hasn't come up on my channel just yet um, i have been in discussions with tasuti about possibly offering a discount on this top so that if you guys wanted to sew along this top with me then there would be a discount for me to offer so i'll get back to you once i have finalized all those arrangements and then i'll share with you the sew along for the hillary top by tasuti fabrics now this top you guys i actually fell in love with this, this top when i was browsing through instagram now as part of my make nine plans for this year and again if you have no idea what make nine is i'm going to go ahead and leave my video link here or in the description box so you can head over and have a look and see what make nine is and what my particular make nine plans are for this year now i want to try out new pattern companies for 2024 and Tasuti is one of those companies that I came across that I have never tried before. But I did fall in love with their Hillary top and I made it using, um, what do you call it? Brodery and glaze for my first version. And I liked it so much, I wanted to make a second version. Now, my first version was not um, true to pattern in the sense that I did not have enough fabrics to do the sleeves as intended. And I wasn't happy with the length of my um, waistline seam. And so I didn't add the elastic into that make. I love it all the same, but it just wasn't true to pattern. And I did want to make it up true to pattern. And this is what I made, you guys. Now, this top has like a um, balloon sleeve with an elastic casing. And it also has elastic casing at the waistline. And it is a peplum top. But instead of gathers, the peplum is actually formed using box pleats. Now, I wore this, I think I actually wore this on Valentine's Day, you guys. I know it's blue, far cry from Valentine's Day colors, but I think I actually wore this to work on Valentine's Day because I am a rebel. <laughs> All right. But I really do like this top. I like the fit of it. And I really like the sleeve detail, which has like an elastic casing right at the shoulder, which holds the front and the back bodice pieces together. And I thought that was so cool. And I think that this boat neckline is actually quite flattering on me. And so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make this top again sometime in the future because I really, really do like it. And if you have never heard of Tasuti Fabrics before, then I would absolutely recommend that you go ahead and give them a try. Now, as I said, I had never tried any of their patterns before. And if first impressions count, then I definitely would give this Tasuti Fabrics make perhaps an eight or nine or so out of 10, because I really think that I um, enjoyed making it and I like how the finished version looks on me. The next make I want to share with you is McCall's 7894, which is this beauty right here made in the most amazing art gallery fabric. This is actually a rayon substrate and I bought it, I think about five or so years ago and I've had it hoarding in my stash for a very long time because I was waiting for the perfect pattern to pair with this fabric. And it struck me when I had done the wrap dress series that I posted right here on my YouTube. I'll go ahead and pop a video in. I'll go ahead and pop the link in so that you guys can check out the video. And I was sharing six different wrap dress patterns that I already own that I was considering sewing up. Now, I have made 7894 before, 
I made it a couple of years ago and I made the um, top version, which is view B. Now, I really liked the pattern, but I just hadn't gotten around to making it again. And now that I have improved my techniques with like fit and construction and so on, I wanted to go ahead and give this pattern another go. Now, as I said, it started out as view B, but it didn't finish the race as view B because I just did not have enough material to cut out the quarter circle skirt that came with the pattern. Now, I had gone ahead previously and lengthened the um, view B circle, uh, circle peplum into a full skirt. And when I placed it on the fabric that I had left after cutting out the bodice, it just wasn't enough, you guys. And so I put a vote out there over on Instagram asking whether I should just make another blouse version or whether I should go ahead and attach a gathered skirt to my bodice to make it into a dress. And the overwhelming response was to attach the gathered skirt. Now, I was leaning towards the gathered skirt anyway because I figured if I cut the peplum part um, using the remainder of the fabric, then I would have like an awkward length sort of left over and I wasn't sure what I would have been able to make with the uh, leftover fabric um, perhaps I might have been able to squeak out um, another camisole but I really wanted to make a dress I really really had my mind set on a dress for this make and so I did go ahead and attach the um, gathered skirt to my bodice and I really 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 am in love with this finished make now it does look wrinkled on hanger because you guys it has actually just come out of the wash I wore this yesterday, which was Friday. I am filming this on Saturday and I actually worked work. The one downside to this rayon fabric, you guys, is it is pretty lightweight. And so the wind was having such fun with me yesterday. My skirt was blowing everywhere. I actually even joked to my hubby that somebody was going to go ahead and flash his bits. But you guys, he did not find that funny, even though I did. And perhaps I have a pretty lame sense of humor. Anyways, I really enjoyed wearing this. It was super comfortable and it fit me so well. Now, I did make a couple fit adjustments to this dress. I did go ahead and do a full bust adjustment, which upgraded the bodice portion of this dress from a B cup up to a C cup. And I did record a tutorial on how to go about doing it. So I'll leave the link right here so that you guys can go and check it out. Now, I would absolutely recommend if you are bigger than a B cup, especially when working with like wrap dresses and so on, to go ahead and do that full bust adjustment. Now, wrap dresses are notorious for gaping. And I also included a tip in that video on how to go ahead and reduce your center front length. And so to reduce any gaping that might result from doing your full bust adjustment. I'm really happy that I made the adjustment for this dress and I'm really happy with how this dress looked on. Now, I also shared with you guys here on YouTube in a short how to go about tying the perfect bow in your wrap dresses and in fact, in anything at all. Now, I picked up the tip on tying the perfect bow from making tons of um, children's dresses. Now, I used to sew for my daughter when she was much smaller and when I was starting out learning how to sew and I sort of perfected tying a bow. I don't sew for her anymore, you guys, because she is growing like a weed and she doesn't really enjoy wearing dresses anyway. And so I save my time and I just don't even bother sewing for her. Maybe when she gets a little bit older and she shows a little bit more interest in like dresses and the sort, then I might start making clothes for her again. But for now, I've pretty much cut her out of my um, making list unless it's like, like a special occasion and she requires um, something particular um, to wear. Now, if you want to go ahead and check out that shot, then you will be doing yourself an absolute favor. So you're welcome. Again, this is M7894 and I give this dress 10 out of 10. Fit, style, fabric, everything was perfection in my view. Now, the next thing that I want to share with you guys is this baby right here. And you guys, she is heavy. This is McCall's 8021, and I also pulled this pattern for my wrap dress series. Again, I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description box so you can head on over and check out the six patterns that I was recommended that you can sew that are wrap dresses. Since the re-release of the Diane Von Furstenberg dress, wrap dresses have been everywhere, and so I wanted to give my two cents on um, making up some wrap dress patterns that you might already have in your stash because they are pretty old 
and they are suitable for woven fabrics. Now, I'm not really fond of knit fabrics, though I do sew them from time to time. I much prefer woven fabrics, and so that video featured six woven patterns. Now, this is one of the patterns, and I actually started making M8021 early on in my sewing journey, but I abandoned the project halfway through because I didn't like how it was looking. And since making this dress, I realized that I probably could have kept going because I pretty much have ended up with the same result for this dress. So let me explain. Now, this dress has an um, attached lining and the lining is actually bagged out when constructing this dress. Now, I took time to cut my main and lining pieces meticulously, you guys. I didn't want any room for... Um, any sort of awkward pulling or tugging because I hadn't cut out my pattern pieces accurately. Now, my main fabric, I think it's a velvet fabric. It does have a slight amount of stretch. And I got this fabric sometime last year from Minerva. I actually purchased this fabric out of my own money and I've had it in my stash waiting for something to speak to me on what it should become. And I thought that it would make for a great M8021. Now, I still don't like how my lining fabric sort of tugs up at the hem. And I feel like it's just come down to the drafting of this pattern. I feel like this pattern needed a separate lining piece, which would allow the sort of give. Like I've seen it in a couple like coat patterns. I've never actually made a coat pattern, but I've seen other people making them up. And I know that some coat patterns the hemline is actually sort of like folded up first and then um, sewn to your bodice mane. And I think that is so that it eliminates this awkward pulling between the main um, fabric and the lining fabric. I don't think I'm doing a very good job at explaining it. And perhaps if you have made a coat before, then you know what I'm talking about. But I think just constructing this dress in the way that this pattern um, sort of intends just results in a sort of awkward pulling at the hemline something about it it just doesn't sit quite um flat and flush in my opinion i don't know if it was because you have to understitch the lining to the main and i don't know if any of the fabric sort of stretched because it is cut on the bias because there is a rounded like hemline and i'm not sure if like just understitching the fabric to the um, lining resulted in any um, stretching or distorting of my fabric but you know what my mind is telling me that it's actually the pattern so if you have made this pattern before m8021 and you have had that experience please be sure to leave me a comment in the comment box down below and let me know whether this was your experience as well with this pattern now i was a little bit unsure of what i wanted to do when i was constructing this dress now i know i wanted to have the long sleeves as indicated on the dress pattern but once I started putting my dress with my lining, I wasn't sure if I wanted to line the sleeves. Now, this pattern recommends that you line the sleeves. And so, you guys, I went ahead and started constructing this dress as if it were going to be um, the sleeveless version, which I think is a view A of the dress. It meant that I had attached my lining and I had understitched my lining right the way around before attaching my sleeves. Now, when I had completed that portion of the um, construction and I tried this dress on I wasn't too surprised to see that I had too much gaping at my arm side now in my experiences patterns that are specifically designed for sleeveless and sleeved um, versions should have different bodice pieces simply because sleeved versions need more ease along the arm side to allow for movement when you put your sleeve in. Now, patterns that sort of just tell you leave the sleeve off and proceed as um, a sleeveless view, in my view, um, are not the best patterns to make up in sleeveless views, unless you're going to take the time to tweak your pattern. Now, again, because I was unsure about what I was going to do, I did not tweak my pattern and remove any of the arm side ease. And once I had sewn it up and realized that it had too much excess in the arm side, then I decided that I was going to put the sleeve on, but that I just wouldn't line it. No, that meant that the inside of my dress is not finished in the neatest way. Really and truly, you guys, the arm side, let me see if I can take it off the hanger. 
The arm side of this dress should be finished so that it encloses the arm side seam. If I had sewn this dress as intended and lined it, then my sleeve lining would have attached to my bodice lining and you would have a clean finish at the arm side. Conversely, if I wanted to finish it this way, then I should not have finished off my front and the um, entire hemline of my dress first. I should have finished the front and left a three or so inch gap in the back, which would have allowed me to attach my um, lining fabric right sides together with my sleeve. And then I would have closed out my um, hemline by hand stitching it into place once my sleeve was in and if i had thought about it properly before i sort of made it up then that is probably what i would have done but i was not about to unpick all of my under stitching and all of my stitching so that i could go back in and bag out this dress and so i figured i would just finish it off using my serger nobody's going to see the inside of my garment anyway but i am sort of disappointed with the finish on this dress nevertheless i am going to wear it it does fit me pretty well it's just that i'm not a hundred percent pleased with the hemline so again this is mccall's 8021 in this sort of animal print sequined sort of um stretch velvet that i got from minerva Now I'm finished with all of the things that I made for myself in February, but I do have two additional makes to share with you. And they are actually a pair of children's dresses. Now a friend of mine asked me to make two matching dresses for her girls for the upcoming St. Patrick's celebration right here on Montserrat. Now on Montserrat, we do have some Irish heritage and St. Patrick's is a big deal here. There is actually a calendar of events that has like 10 or 12 days of non-stop like reveling and partying surrounding St. Patrick's time and so there are lots of like dances, street jams, um, plays, productions, like everything happens during St. Patrick's here and as I said it is a big deal. Now there is something called a heritage sl um, slave feast day which is when we sort of cook up foods and have like locally produced arts and crafts and so on on sale and it really honors our african and our irish heritages combined and so for heritage day she wanted to make two ankara dresses for her girls now these are what i came up with she did send me a picture and i found this pattern which is the annabelle dress by bebekins patterns now i have never used a bebekins pattern before and i am pretty pleased with the finished makes that i have come up with so this dress has um, like a crossover sort of strap detail in the back and it does have a back waistline casing and it does also have snaps at the shoulders. So I put my snaps in just this morning and I'm really, really happy with how these dresses turned out. Like I think this is so, so cute. Now you might notice that there is a little bit of tape on my bodice and this is because this Ankara fabric, it was kind of difficult to tell the wrong from the right side. And so I like to go ahead and put markings on my fabric so that I can distinguish my right from wrong sides and I don't make a mess when I'm constructing. So I haven't yet gone ahead and removed the elastic on this dress. Now for the matching sister dress, it's not 100% done, you guys. I just need to go ahead and turn in the hem on the bigger version of this dress and to remove my gathering stitches and clean up any loose threads or anything of the sort. But all in all, I think that this dress is pretty cute and I can't wait to see the girls in their matching dresses. Now, I don't have any pictures to share with you and I probably won't have any until well after St. Patrick's and they're not my kids. So obviously I'll need to get permission from my friend to share them. But if she does, I'll try to share it with you guys sometime later, perhaps maybe on Instagram or so on, so that you can see these dresses on. So if you have little girls in your life that you might want to sew for, and I know for a lot of us, it's becoming more warmer. We're heading towards like spring and summer, at least for those of you guys who have seasons here, it's pretty hot almost all year round. And so um, I think these dresses will get tons of wear. But all that to say, if you have any little girls in your life, you might want to go ahead and check out the Annabelle dress by Bebby Kins Patterns.
All right, folks, so that is all that I wanted to share with you guys today. Those are all the things that I made or almost finished making during the month of February. Now, March has already gotten off to a good start. I am working on a commissioned piece. There is an event coming up here on Montserrat called Boozy Brunch, and the theme is Ankara. Now, you guys, I love, love, love me some Ankara. I have sewn so many things using Ankara, and I was really excited to see that somebody was putting on an event which was featuring Ankara. So a friend of mine reached out and asked me if I would make her um, something to wear to Boozy Brunch, and I said yes. And I'm actually making for her um, a top and skirt set. Now, it's well in the works. It's not finished yet and it's probably about maybe about a third of the way done and so I'm not going to share it with you guys just yet but perhaps it will be included in my match makes roundup so that is all I wanted to share with you guys today please be sure to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment box down below which of my makes were your favorite have you made any of these items before are you planning on making any of these patterns? Do you have any questions on any of my makes that I did not cover um, during this video? Be sure to leave it all in the comments box down below and I'll do my best to respond. So if you have made it this far into my video and you are not yet a subscriber, please consider hitting the subscribe notification and turning on your notification bell so that you never miss any of my upcoming videos. Subscriptions cost you absolutely nothing, but they do guarantee you a space right here in my YouTube sewing community. And I will be absolutely happy to have you join me. So that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. And until next time, stay calm, stay cool, stay safe, and absolutely keep sewing. Peace.